Please stand for the reading of the scripture. It's come from Matthew chapter 2, verse 1 through 12. Matthew 2, 1 through 12. We'll do in response reading. I'll start, and you read verse 2, and we'll go back and forth, uh, and then we till 12. Let me start. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet. Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly and ascertained from them what time the star had appeared. After listening to the king, they went on their way, and behold, the star they have seen when it um, rose went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. And going into the house, they saw the child would marry his mother and the f- fell down and worshipped him. And then opening their treasures, they offered the, him gift, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. Amen. Please be seated. When, when I was a child, um, you know, a little kid, you know, I really looked forward to Christmas because it meant a gift, a present, Santa Claus, right? And of course, it's winter break. Um, things that I, I wasn't really, or me and my brother, we are not usually able to get, you know, we would get it on Christmas Day. Maybe it's something a little bigger, better things. Um, and I remember waking up from my sleep on Christmas Day and finding a gift by my, you know, bedside. Or sometimes the Christmas tree, because when I was younger, I believe Santa Claus. I hope that none of you do, but maybe I spoiled it for you, but... Um, you know, I didn't know that Santa Claus didn't really exist. Um, I don't know, I might be popping some of the dream of the younger kids. But um, so, so when I opened, you know, we were, we were just overjoyed with gifts, you know. Sometimes we kind of knew because we kind of say like, oh, mom, dad, this is what we kind of want, things like that. There are times that we didn't know, so it was even more surprise. So, and then it, our tradition changed to so we were allowed to open the gift on Christmas Eve. So we'll have you know, Christmas, you know, gifts under the tree, and when, you know, when family came together, we will, we'll open up, you know. And I don't know if I told you, there are a few years, me and my brother, because gift was there before Christmas, you know, you know, we will secretly, when parents are not home, slightly open the wrap. And you know, it's like, I was like, oh, and then we close it. And then I remember being the older and wiser, saying, hey, make sure you pretend that you're really happy. So that the parents would never know that we already opened the gifts before them. And I still remember that. So I was like teaching him, like, hey, you need to really act well, you know, and things like that. I remember. So one year we, we kind of like, I don't know if they really got that or not. Um, but, but there are times that we've done it because we just, we couldn't wait till Christmas Eve to open. So, you know, I mean, as kids. Um, and then that, that was the meaning of Christmas for me growing up until, you know, it was not really about material things. Uh, but was it different? Because I realized that what truly gift of Christmas was all about, right? As, as we celebrate, it was Jesus Christ, the birth of Savior, and we celebrate. But then deep in our hearts, you know, all of us, like, oh, it's nice that we have trees and, and Christmas carols and, and, and gifts and family time. And those things kind of brings us joy, right? You know, joy, it, it's more like it's emotion or according to the world, Evoked by well-being, success, or good fortune, or, you know, prospect of possessing what one desire. So we're happy that we get something that we maybe desire, or we get a self-realized gift, or, or cards. But what brings true joy to us in the season of Christmas, we know that it's not, 
Christmas trees, it's not Christmas carol, it's not gifts or Santa Claus or all other things, but truly it is our Lord Jesus Christ, right? Our Lord and Savior who brings true joy of Christmas. So today I want to talk about, I want to share about joy of Christmas as we go through season of even Advent. Uh, and so the passage that I hope you remember two weeks ago we read in Luke 2 and Matthew 2, I want to talk about what does that mean to really have joy of Christmas and how do we go How do we go about having that joy of Christmas? You know, how can we have that joy in this season? Or even not just season, but every single day as Christians, or maybe those of you who still are struggling to find maybe truth and find Christ in your life, how can we really find that joy that as Advent focuses on with peace and hope and love and joy? So first, we start with who could really have that joy of Christmas? And we see that in the passage, the one who's desperate for Jesus, or even desperate for something, that they don't have it, they can't have it, so they're desperate, will truly experience great joy. In today's passage and Luke 2, there are individuals that I shared with you too. Those who were awake that time and, and, and wait to experience true joy. And first was shepherd. I shared with you two weeks ago. And verse 8 of Luke, it says, And there were shepherds living out in the field nearby, keeping watch over their flock at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. Um, It's a different version I'm reading off. You know, shepherds were one of those few who were up during that time because they were attending flock of sheep. There were probably a lot of them. And everyone else were back home in town because of census that the king was doing. The king has ordered. So, and and Shepherd was one of the most, as I said, neglected people because they're just almost maybe what you call the bottom of the food chain. They're just doing whatever the simple task. Um, and, and of course, as I shared a couple of weeks ago, some of the scholars have different views. Were they really marginalized or were they really false witness or not? There is, there is actually debate. I, I, I researched a little more. Um, but they were kind of have not much to boast about, not much to look forward to, except each day they're just taking care of sheep, and even that night, they're just awake. And some of you might think that, oh, that's so sad. These shepherds are just watching the sheep on Christmas night. You know, it's kind of sad. They're not able to celebrate Christmas, right? I know if you're, I know if you're thinking that way, let me just break this bubble to you. The Christmas actually hasn't happened. So Jesus, it's after. So they're not watching the sheep on Christmas Day because Christmas Day didn't exist until Jesus came. So don't think, they, oh, how could they not celebrate Christmas, you know, and watching over the sheep? That's really sad <laughs> because Christmas is not, doesn't exist until Jesus comes, right? So that's their first Christmas. I'm sure after that they might celebrate. Um, but I hope some of you, because I was like, at one point, I was like, wait, is it Christmas? And they realized it's not. I mean, technically it is Christmas because the very first Christmas, which Jesus came, but there's not celebrating. But they, they were just desperate for what? Something. Their life was stuck. They feel like there's nothing going on. And as we've seen in the book of Luke 2, you know, they, were, they were scared to see all this experience. And then the 15, Luke 2, 15 says, When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has been happened, which the Lord told, has told us about. Not only did they heard the news, but they were desperate to, to see and experience this, this Savior and Lord. And after they, they, they seen that, they, because they're desperate for it, 20, we see that it says, The shepherds return, glorifying and praising God for all the things they have heard, seen, which were just as they had been told. Right? So they were excited. They were praising God because finally they realized that, oh, who, they've been desperate for something, and finally they found Jesus Christ. They praised God and experienced God with great joy. They were desperate for change in their lives. They were desperate for, and they were in need of Savior. And, and the thing is this, nothing really in their lives really changed in terms of surrounding. They go back as shepherd, they go back, same thing, but I'm sure their life is completely changed because their heart changed, because in their hearts now there is Jesus Christ. In their hearts there is a good news of the gospel. And then there's another group, the one, of course, that's closest to Jesus, baby Jesus Christ at this point, is Joseph and Mary, right? 
Because Luke 2, 16 and, uh, 17 and 18, 19, when they've seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child, and all who heard were amazed at what the shepherd said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her hearts. You know, as shepherds, you know, came to tell them the message, you know, they were all amazed and overjoyed. And Mary treasured all these things and, and wondered what else it could more mean to her. You know, Mary was not really sure, you know, what would really come out of all these things. I'm sure it's a, it's a huge thing for her to grasp because what you have to understand is this. They were running away. They were kind of in hiding, right? Because you talk about this Joseph, with his wife was pregnant, but technically she, got, she became pregnant before they were officially married. They were engaged, but there's no way. So some people probably figuring out what's going on. They're, we know that they were away from each other. They were engaged. They were never married, but she's already pregnant. You know, this is something that would be bad. She'll be almost stoned to death, the kind of point. But he never left her, neglected. But they were kind of on the run in a way. They are kind of not in hiding. Of course, they're not really hiding from the whole society. And, and now they're wondering, and there's no place for them to even give birth. And, and where they, f- they receive true joy of Christ. And she was the recipient of the greatest probably honor, which is able to give birth to the Savior and Lord. When she was woman, pregnant, without proper marriage, actually. Yet, there's a true joy. And then, today's passage, we see these magi, foreigners. Um, Matthew 2, 10 and 11. When they saw the star which they were looking to find the Savior. They were told that he was born on that day. On coming to the house, they saw the child with Mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. And they opened their treasure, present them with gift of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. So they were overjoyed to see that. Now, one of the things I have to tell you is that these are not three individuals. It's not three magi, because there's nowhere in the Bible that says three. So a lot of times we think that, oh, it's three people It could be four, it could be two, it could be multiple, we don't know. People say it's three because they brought three gifts. So possibly every one of them brought one gift. So it's possible that it's three, but nowhere in the Bible says three magi. We we say it's three magi, but as we we see. But they came with the gift. They they worship Christ. They honor the birth of Christ and left. Because what? They were desperate for a true king. They were desperate for Messiah. They were desperate for Lord. And these are commonality of the people. First, these were kind of most neglected people in that time period, right? Even, even today. The shepherds, the lowest of the class, the poor people, Mary, female, woman, especially we know that in the time of you know, New Testament, women were very neglected. Or not, she could not, well, any woman could not be uh, official witness in a court of law. And we know that even throughout our history, that women have looked down. It has changed, but even there are moments in our history that women weren't even allowed to vote, which in today's sense it would be crazy, but that's what happened. And the Magi, foreigners, uh, which were in, in Israelites, they didn't look, they're so called Gentiles. They were not really considered high standard. Yet God chose these people most neglected, most marginalized, most not really considered high class to, to really experience true joy. Why? Because it doesn't matter where they were. It didn't matter. They were desperate. Same for all of us. Some of you might be in good standing with God, maybe so-called according to the world. Maybe some of you have done great things, and some of you feel like, man, I've been away from God, or I haven't done much, or I don't know if I really know God. The whole purpose, the whole point is that are you really desperate for a Savior? I think, I think Senior Pastor shared with, with, with us last week too. One of the biggest challenges of our people, especially non believers, is that it's not just acknowledging Christ. It's not about acknowledging God. It's about acknowledging that you are a sinner and you are in need of Savior. Amen. That you need to depend on our Lord and Savior. That is challenge. And that is something that we struggle with as, as a believers. Why? Because... Sometimes we're not that desperate for Christ because we have other things that we depend on. Now, King Herod, 
He was desperate to find Christ, but he wasn't desperate for him. He was desperate to get rid of him because he was afraid that if that true king come, he thought that he would be replaced by him. But he didn't think that Jesus came not just be the king of the Jews, but king of the world, and he was already. But when he heard the news, he was afraid. And not only just him, but the whole, whole Jerusalem was troubled. People were troubled. Why? Because they weren't ready for Messiah. They weren't desperate for Messiah. They, they had a different kind of Messiah in mind. They, want, they have a different kind of success, different kind of blessing in their mind. And just like that, even today, when you think about Christmas, when you think about Jesus Christ, when you think about gift, when you think about true joy, where does that true joy come from? Is it really your desire, desperateness for Christ? Or is there other things? Yes, Christmas trees are nice, Christmas lights are nice, gifts are nice, carols are all nice. But that's very small, small part of Christmas. The true centerpiece, true meaning of Christ is about Jesus Christ, right? So are we really celebrating that? Do we really find joy? Because many often do not have joy of Christ because they simply are desperate for other things. I remember going to uh, the American Republic for the first time in in 90s as a mission trip. And it was completely different than when I went five years ago with our church group. Uh, it was a lot more barren. A lot of roads were not, you know, paved and things like that. And there's power go out here and there and things like that. But one of the things I noticed, I mean, even 90s in America, was, it was everything was good, prosperous. Everything was even more fruitful than actually today, I feel like. And going there, one of the things that I realized is that these people who are living in so, such a bad condition, you know, they barely have any shoes. The kids are following our, our buses because they have nothing. You know, we literally, you know, you know those paper plates, a really thin paper plate that when you put food on, it's going to, you could see from the bottom what kind of food you have, kind of paper plates. You know, we, we will cut these and put a rubber band and put a Nike logo. I don't know if it's illegal, like copyright issues, but we'll put a Nike, and they will love that. We're just giving those out to the kids. And we remember we go to door-to-door street witnessing. These people are very receptive. We came and said, hey, we want to share about Jesus Christ and gospel. And they're just like so happy to hear. Why? Because they have nothing else to look forward to. They're desperate for something. So when the news comes about Jesus Christ, the gospel, their hearts are open because they've been desperate. And finally they found true Savior. Back in the States, people are not as desperate because we have so many things. So many things that we could have and fulfill our needs, what we think. And that's why we have more trouble today because we have enough. We could get by. Therefore, we're not as desperate for Christ. And that's something that I want you to really reflect this morning. Are you really thankful because Jesus is everything for you or you kind of have all things that you could enjoy. You have maybe enough money in your bank account. You have enough family to celebrate. You have enough food in your refrigerator. And of course, yes, those things are, yes, God has provided us too. But maybe we're more thankful for things we have that God has given us rather than for God, who's truly a source of the blessing, strength of blessing. There's something that we have to think about when we see these people who didn't have much to give, much to share, but they have joy because they were desperate for Christ. Second thing is definitely, not only you have to be desperate, but as I said, but you have to come to Jesus Christ. You know, the people in the world, they know about God. They know about Jesus Christ. They heard, I mean, how many Bibles are out in the whole world? I mean, if you have cell phone, you have access to the Bible, right? Because fortunately from uh, great people that have made great apps, free apps that give you access, and there's websites they can always go. And, of course, missionaries around the world, and many of us go into different places. One of the, another commonality that these people that we see in Luke 2 and Matthew 2 is that they heard the news. They knew that Bethlehem, you know, and that Jesus was born in Bethlehem, but what did they do? They didn't just hear it. It's like, oh, finally, my king is here. The Savior Lord is here. No, they went. They war with Christ. So, Magi, the foreigners, they came all the way, and when they finally saw the sign, the star was pointing where the Messiah was, they were overjoyed, excited. Oh, we're getting really close. We're almost there. We are about to experience the birth of the Savior and Lord. We're excited. Same with Shepherd. When they heard the news that we need to go find who this person is, 
and know more. We want to be closer. And of course, Joseph and Mary, they experience right their front seat. From the birth of Savior, they're the first one and only one, actually, to experience the whole thing from the beginning. You know, till unfortunately for Mary, she witnessed, or unfortunate or fortunate, see her son, Jesus Christ, die on the cross, which is part of God's mission, but I'm sure it's very painful for her to see that as well. But guess what? There's also an individual who knew that the birth of Savior was born, but didn't go, bother to go by trying to figure out ways to kill him, King Herod. He was afraid that he would be things taken away. He was afraid that, that if Jesus was born, if you go see him, does that mean he'll be replaced? I think that's the issue with us too. We feel like if I follow Christ every day, if I really obey everything he's telling me, does that mean that I'm going to lose some of the things that I enjoy? You know, things that we hold on to. Does that mean I can't watch football on Sunday? Does that mean I can't work on Sunday? Does that mean I can't do certain things because I have to do everything for Christ? Does that mean there is going to be no you know, happiness and joy that I enjoy doing these things? Does that mean I have to wake up every morning early and I have to come to church and to 6 o'clock services and all these services and I have to do all these serve? Let me tell you this. It's yes and no. We serve because we we are, we are called to serve the Lord. But also we serve because we are thankful and grateful for what God has done. We serve because we love God. And we love God because we, God first loved us and we experience His love. Amen. Many of you serve, you are not serving for money, for power, for fame. You simply serve because you want to be part of his kingdom. You want to function because we, that's what we are called to be, part of function. And you know what more amazing thing is this? As you serve, as you worship the Lord, as you are near the Lord, as you experience, you know what? There is joy. There's a joy that people in this world don't have no clue. Amen. And that's what these people experience. They came to see that's what Joseph and Mary experienced. That's what Magi did. That's what Shepherd did. Not just know about it, not just hear about it, but they came to be with Christ. Are we just happy about news and, and or willing to come to you just because when you do, there is joy? Are they, are they just overjoyed, amazed in what they see? No, they, they came to Christ and experienced. And they put Christ and seeing him over all things. And these shepherds left their flock for that moment because they wanted to see. Magi's left, came this far away, risking their life. They knew that they could get in trouble with the King Herod. They knew that King Herod had plans. But they came because they wanted to experience the true Savior and Lord. Not just hear about it, but they wanted to see and experience in person. Amen. And that's what our purpose should be. Many of us, many of people in the world know about Jesus Christ, about God. But do you know God the way you know individual personally? That is something we have to think about. You know, I grew up as a Christian, but there are many years that I knew about God because, you know, I was told about, I knew about Christ, I knew the meaning of Christ, I knew, I knew the meaning of Christmas, I knew all these things. But did I really know Christ? Some part of my life, no, because I never met Christ. I was around, but I never came to Christ until the moment that I made my decision to follow, accept Christ. And for some of you, you might need that. Some of you maybe been in church for a long, long time, but maybe never made that decision of saying, Jesus, I want to accept you as my Lord and Savior. I want to follow you. I want to give my life to you. Everything I have is yours. Maybe that's something that you need to decide even this season, even today. Because without that, there, you're not going to experience the true joy that the scriptures talk about, what I'm talking about, many Christians talk about. You're not going to be able to truly experience that until Jesus is in your heart and Jesus is your Lord and Savior of your life. No matter how many things you do to serve, you'll be burned out. Then you feel like you're wasting your time until you fully 
give your heart and, and life to the Lord. Many people do not have true joy because many don't know Christ. Or many are not desperate for Christ. Or many have not accepted Christ. And reason that we lack joy as Christians is because we have so many other things that satisfy us and bring contentment. So that moment, we don't really need Christ. Because as long as I have money, or as long as I have family, as long as my car, my house, my job, my career, all these things I have. The reason we are not able to truly enjoy Christmas for the true purpose is maybe because we have so many things surround us and blind us. Maybe Christmas trees, maybe carols, gifts, people, parties, a mood, festivity mood, are enough to get us by with little joy. And we are okay with that for every year. But we lose true meaning of Christmas. Because it's not about all these things that are surrounding it, but it's about the centerpiece, Jesus Christ. Shepherd, Magi, Mary, and Joseph rejoiced in Jesus Christ because they needed Savior, they needed Messiah, and they were desperate for Christ, and they came to Christ, and they met Christ, and there were true joy in their hearts. As one of the scholars said, the close, the joy, and the meaning of joy is. Related to the gladness and happiness, though, joy is more of a state of being than emotion. It's not about just like you feel excitement. It's like, oh, yeah, I'm excited to see Jesus Christ. But it's because you being, you you're have joy because of being, the state of being with Christ, because of the result of your choice, which is that you have decided to follow Christ. You have decided to accept Christ. You decided to just see him and meet him in person. So it's a part of, having joy is part of experience of being a Christian, being a Christ follower, being a child of God. Joy is about being excited about the grace and mercy that God has. Being grateful about your status as God's children. So I want to challenge you this morning. Are you really desperate for Christ? Or you are excited for so many other things and Jesus' this little thing that you add on. It's something we have to think about. And I'm really coming to Christ each and every day. And then lastly, I want to talk about another joy that we could have in this season, which is important, is the one who shares Jesus too with others. Bringing news to the world. As we have, you know, sung Jesus' true joy, and we must bring joy to the world, Right? Sharing Jesus Christ, being used by God. And I'm sure the angels were just honored to proclaim the birth of the Savior. The messengers were. And I don't know if you have ever shared gospel with someone or led someone to Christ. It's a great feeling. It's a great joy. You know, I remember there are times that I will go out and it's like, man, it's hard. It's challenging to go out and even, even just to talk to strangers. But there is a joy because I know that God is pleased with what I'm doing. God is pleased with me going out and representing Christ. And of course, even the greater joy is that when I share gospel and someone accepting Christ. You know, it happened, I remember one of the incidents I shared with you before, it was one individual that I shared when he accepted Christ and coming home. Just my heart was full of joy knowing that God used me to lead someone to Christ. There's no greater honor than that, that God using me to lead someone to light from darkness. And that is something that we need to do that. As Luke 2.20 says, the shepherds return glorifying and praising God for all the things they have heard and seen, which were just as they have been told. So they glorify God and praising God, which is what? Talking about, praising not just about singing, but talking about who God is. What he has done. And of course, their praising part is about, wow, the birth of Savior, Jesus Christ, the Son of, well, I don't think they know the part of our Son of God, but Savior is truly upon this earth and bringing peace upon this world. The Messiah that we've been waiting for is here. They're just seeing about that. And there's a great joy. Because why? Because we are not part of His kingdom. Sense of belonging and worth. My worth, my identity, my value is now lies in Jesus Christ who came for me and for us. He came to this earth and died for me and resurrected 
to that collab life. And that's what we need to do. We go out. The whole purpose, especially those who know already Christ, accepted Christ, you'll have a great joy when you go out to the world and say, hey, you know why we celebrate Christmas? You know why we are, have joy in the season of Christmas? It's all because of Jesus Christ and what he has done for me and for you. And that's what we need to proclaim to the world. Let them know that our Savior and Lord came to this earth 2,000 years ago. And his power and his presence and his salvation is still powerful today as it was 2,000 years ago. The power of the cross, the power of resurrection is still as powerful today as it was 2,000 years ago when he resurrected. And that's what we need to share. In order to have that great joy, we need to go and share Christ with others. So let me sum up what joy is for me, acronym joy, <clears throat> as we have PowerPoint. J is news of, about Jesus Christ, right? The birth of our Lord and Savior, the gospel. And then others is what? As we go to others, the good, share the good news to others. That's how we, and then you, which means your heart. You need to be really full of Christ. You need to really have Christ. You need to really be desperate for Christ and have Christ in your heart. And the true joy will be complete in this season of Christmas for Christians. Because Christmas is not just about me experiencing Christ and celebrating Christmas, but also about celebrating and sharing that joy with others, Amen. with the world. Because this world definitely needs Christ. Amen. Our neighbors, our community, even some of our families are living in darkness and not knowing the true meaning, true joy of Christmas. So let us go out to the world and proclaim that our Messiah, our Lord, our Savior has come upon this earth 2,000 years ago and he died and rose again for all of us. So we need to accept Christ as Lord and Savior in order to have a full joy in this season. So I pray that as we are approaching Christmas, which is literally a week away, I hope that we'll be prepared to really celebrate with true joy in our hearts as we confess that Jesus is our Lord and Savior, as we are desperate for Him, but also as we proclaim that Jesus is our Lord and Savior to the world. Amen? Amen. So you have that one week to invite friends, families, neighbors to church, but even talk about who Jesus is to you with them. And definitely that will be true joy of Christmas in our hearts. Christmas is a beginning for even greater things to come and completed by Jesus' death and resurrection. And now he is with us forever. And soon, someday, he'll return. Until then, we have that opportunity to share the Christ with others. So let us go out to the world and share the true joy of Jesus Christ, true joy of Christmas. Amen? Let's pray. Father God, we know that you have loved us so much that you gave your one and only son to us. So help us remember that in this season of Christmas, it's not just about things that we have in our lives, things that we're able to enjoy. It may be all about Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who came upon this earth 2,000 years ago and went through his life to teach us, to guide us through he died on the cross for our sins he resurrected on third day to bring us victory to bring us salvation to bring us hope and peace and love and joy in Christ that only comes from Christ that has reconciled us to God that we could be with God forever through Christ so help us to remember what you have done for us and help us remember who you are in each season of Christmas. So may your peace, your love, your joy, and hope be upon us as we continue on. May the grace of Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for our sins, and love of God, Father, who gave his one and only Son to us, and the power and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit upon us, as we continue to celebrate Christ as our joy, as our hope, as our love, as our peace in this season. 
and go out to the world and proclaim that not only that Jesus came to this earth, he has died and risen for our salvation, for our relationship, that we will continue to proclaim to the world now and forever. Amen. Mm-hmm.